when bass sense that pressure, we know that they are going to slip a little bit deeper. Very rarely do they just shoot down the shoreline horizontally, they slip deeper. And what we hear oftentimes is the term first break. Well, I think that term first break can sometimes be misleading because it makes us automatically think about a depth change and a lot of times a depth change of significance. Well, instead of first break, I like to take that term off to the side, even though it is helpful, and think about what 99% of bass do is when they feel this pressure is they slip to the second defined edge. And let me go ahead and explain a little bit by what I mean by that. So, so many of us fish the first defined edge. It might be the shoreline, the actual shoreline, or maybe you're fishing that inside weed line up there close to the shoreline. We are eyes forward predators. We like to throw our lures at things that we can see. And that first defined edge is often what we can see. Well, that second defined edge really can vary from body of water to body of water. And the key part to this is it's not necessarily deep. It, it's probably going to be deeper. So let's go back to that idea of the second defined edge and vegetation or a weed line. So that inside to outside is a clear example of bass that can slip a little bit deeper from a first defined edge to a second defined edge. Some bodies of water, this isn't going to be very much vertical transition or much of a vertical difference. Or it could be like right here where it's about a 15 foot difference from where the vegetation is first defined up by the shoreline to we get to where water is deep enough where that second line stops. The second defined edge can also be something like laydowns, those ends of laydowns in a little bit deeper water and bass love to hop from end to end to end, especially if you've got a stretch of shoreline on your lake or river that has just nothing but laydowns. They will use the end of those trees that are down in the water, that very outside edge or that second defined edge and just use it as a migration route and travel back and forth along it. But so many anglers are throwing up towards the shoreline side of these laydowns and actually are completely missing where the majority of the bass are, especially on these highly pressured days. And here's another good example. So this is a part of the lake that I live on and we can see where the slope here, and it is a fairly defined slope, okay? It's not gradual, it drops off pretty quickly. And we can see where this slope comes down and then hits the bottom where it flattens out. Well, right in that corner where those sides meet, where the angle from the shoreline comes down to the bottom, the bass love to travel right down that edge. I see it all the time, especially on weekends when the boat traffic and the activity on the lake ramps up, they will just slip down to this particular spot and travel back and forth. And the crazy thing is, it's not that far from the shoreline. In this particular situation, it's only about 10 feet from the dry land to where this transition is. So you can picture anglers coming in here and completely missing where the majority of the fish are at. They're still gonna catch some up shallow, right? There's always gonna be fish that stay up there or try to bury up and cover shallow when something's going on in their world. But the majority of them, the majority of them just slide down to this second defined edge and just travel along it. And the real key here is to keep our lures along this edge as, as much as we can. Keep that lure in the strike zone as often as we can. So that really means getting up along that bank. And if you're a shore angler, depending on the cover around you, trees and bushes and stuff and how you can cast, we want to try to parallel that second defined edge the best that we can. I have had some of my best days on the water when there's just so much boat traffic out there because I focus on this slightly deeper spot, this next edge, whether it's treetops or, you know, vegetation where it stops, whatever it might be. But because of that boat traffic and wakes, it's kind of stirring up the bottom and getting the food chain activated. And when I get up tight to the shoreline and parallel it like this, I'm safe from all that boat traffic out there and I can really keep that lure in the zone 
as long as I can. And it's also easy for me to check different depths, check that second defined edge, that third edge, fourth, whatever it might be on your body of water. And hey, if you want to watch a video about three bass behaviors that we really need to see and witness firsthand and understand them to help out our fishing, go ahead and check this one out right here. And make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.